Okay, last week I talked about the nature of authority. And in that discussion we focused primarily on God's intent for various authorities here on earth and I talked a little bit about the government and most particularly how the church is to be run. This week uh, with the verses we just read the discussion is going to be over the basis of authority. In other words, what is the final basis for authority? Which is the same question as the basis for law and the basis for morality. Uh, and I'm going to add here uh, a verse that you all didn't read, but I'm going to read here. And it's an exodus where God reveals his name to Moses. Uh, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. God first announced, I am who I am. And the Hebrew is simply the root word for existence. And that root word is the root word behind the, the name of God, Yahweh. Which in the Old Testament where you see Lord in all caps, that's Yahweh. And it comes from, and Yahweh means literally self-existent one. So the Lord revealed himself to Moses as the self-existent one. And that's important for the discussion on the ultimate basis for authority and for morals because you first have to realize the ultimate foundation for everything. And, and that is that the, the Lord is the ultimate foundation for everything. And that's why what Paul wrote in Colossians 1, 9 through 18 is so important. And I'm going to focus here on verse 15, which says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him, in other words, on the basis of Him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. So not only is the physical universe dependent on him, on the self-existent God, but morality, law, the reference to thrones and dominions, it's talking about powers and authorities. It's talking about governments. Law is based on God. Morality is based on God. He is the reference frame that decides right and wrong and the reference frame for the whole universe but we often don't see that because when man fell we lost sight of that and we start thinking me myself and I and it becomes about the self and then when people get together in societies it societies take pride in themselves uh, you'll hear people brag about the glories of the secular state or a person may cry about the glory of their country and they may cry about the glory of their church they transfer glory that is due to the Lord to man-made things and this is what in Romans 10 uh, it describes how Israel fell and this is what Israel stumbled over and they took pride in that they had the law but in boasting that they had the law, they lost sight of the point of the law. And it says here, For I bear them witness, they, had, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. In other words, they did not allow God to be the foundation for their righteousness. They did not allow Him to be the basis or the reference frame for their righteousness. They created their own righteousness. They created their own system. And they thought that they had an advantage over the Gentiles because their own system was using the very law that God gave. But they didn't take it as through faith in God. They took it as through their own efforts. For Moses writes about the righteousness which of the law. The man who does these things shall live by them. This was the weakness of the Old Testament. It was the law of God. But the Mosaic Covenant was based on your ability to perform. So the foundation, guess what the foundation of that system was? Was it God or was it the individual? It was based upon the ability of the individual to keep the law. The ability to interpret the law, to keep the law, to do. It was about what I did. And of course the problem is, is that that's only good as long as the eye that does it's... Um, is perfect and is a person who's trusting in God. But when man fell, that cooked it. Because everything I did was just me, 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 I, I, me, myself, I. 
And so that didn't take care of the fundamental problem. Even if you're somebody who was flawless as fur is old, cross the T's, dot the I's, obeying the particulars. It was all self-centered. It was all about me. I did this. I did this. Look what a good swell guy I am. And in God's eyes, that was filthy rags. But the righteousness of the faith doesn't speak that. It speaks this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes the righteous, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, we trust that Christ is our righteousness. Faith understands that God is the essence of righteousness. He is the reference frame for righteousness. Just as God is the source for reality of the universe, and just as God spoke the universe into being, that we are righteousness because of something that God does, not because of what we do. And that the faith, living by faith, is acknowledging that, believing that, and then acting on it. As God works in you, then you begin to speak and work after the likeness of God. As God tells you, no, you shouldn't steal. You don't steal. As God tells you, you should help that old lady across the street. You help the old lady across the street. And on and on in, in, in every area that is, is in our lives. Uh, and there's a psalm that describes this here. And it's in Psalm 89, 14 to 16. And it says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In other words, those people who have faith in God, they understand that righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. In other words, God's rule is based on righteousness and justice. And what is the basis of righteousness and justice will be the next question. It's the moral character of God that becomes the basis of the righteousness and justice, which is the basis for his laws. It's the basis for the rule of law. Now, the world doesn't understand this. You, you, you go into the courts of the land today, they're not going to understand this, but this is how it is in the kingdom of God. And in terms of how we should live, that is the reference frame for how we are to live uh, in the light of God's law. Not based on our ability to follow it, but on Christ's ability to manifest it. And as we have confidence and what Christ is doing, as we open our ears, our spiritual ears, to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, then we act accordingly. Uh, that's what it means when it says, they walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. The countenance is a big word for his face. As we behold the face of God, we behold that spiritually. And as we get into the end time revival, and we get into... Uh, the apostolic ministry, God raising up people who literally in the modern day see the face of Jesus. They have visions of Jesus like Paul did. Paul saw Jesus face to face. He never did while Jesus walked in the earthly ministry, but he saw the resurrected Christ. And even today God is raising up people who not only have the ear to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, but walking in the light of the face of Jesus seeing him face to face, walking with him, talking with him. This is something we need to be seeking. This is something we need to be rejoicing. It says, in your name they rejoice all day long, and in your righteousness they are exalted. Now, following God may not seem to be a lovely thing when, when you're being persecuted, when everything's against you. But remember, God allows those things to come against you so that uh, you will be exalted in due time. And it is by God's righteousness that we are exalted. 